Wide angle, Bray. Don't do wide angle. Okay, isn't that wild? No, 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 Kyoto. For like not people, it's dope though. For like, like what I just did, I think it's perfect for. Now we switch to the regular one. And then we'll get in them pores. <laughs> Come on. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty. I'm gonna introduce you to some of our plants. So here we have a ZZ plant. Warren came home one day, or I guess I came home one day, and he had surprised me with it. I was so pumped. It was on my plant wish list. I wanted one forever. It's just such like a hearty, healthy looking plant. I have this thing psychologically where I'm always like, if you get a plant that looks really strong, maybe it'll last longer. So it has been such a treat. It's super easy to take care of. Like if you don't water it, it doesn't miss a beat. It just, it's a great plant. I can't go wrong with that. So here we have a ZZ plant and here we have a snake plant. Um, my brain is fried, so I actually called it a zebra plant earlier, but it's definitely not a zebra plant. Here I have um, our ivies. It's really cool because the ivies are a mix of ones that have been propagated by me. This is one that Warren bought, and that was one that he surprised me with. I always wanted one that had like the cream color on it, so I was super pumped when he came home with it. It was awesome. Here we have the somewhat embarrassing yucca plant. In theory, people say that this plant is supposed to be really easy to take care of, but this one has done significantly better than the first one I had in my apartment at Bed-Stuy. So the one in New York, I think what happened with it is that the roots, um, it was overwatered, and the roots just ended up getting rotted and they just, it was terrible. It just died like a really dramatic death. So nine times out of 10, what we actually do with this guy is we just try to water it as little as possible, always doing a soil test, checking to make sure that um, the top inch and two, two inches is dry before we water it. Here we have a ponytail palm, and I just love this guy. Warren had it in his apartment when I first started going to visit him when we first started dating, and I just always thought it was so cute. And it just is such an easy going plant. The only thing is that it normally will shed like kind of towards the end of winter, and I always freak out because I'm always like, oh no, it's dying. And then in the last minute, it makes a comeback and it looks fantastic. This planter, I actually made myself. I have a whole DIY tutorial on how to do concrete planters. Um, it was just a really fun run that I had during the summer because I would make them on the rooftop and it was just a great project. So if you're looking for planters, DIY is definitely the way to go. Here we have a rubber plant. So when I lived in bed there was a corner store down the street from my house that always had all these different plants that I wanted. And one day I was passing by and I saw that they had the rubber plant and I was just so excited. It was another one on my wish list and I just couldn't say no. So back here, why don't you tell the people about this one more? Because <laughs> I don't know the name of it. Do you, you know the name of it? Any of them. It's a cactus. <laughs> This is, what, this is what I call the super soca of cacti. Now, to be fair, we, I mean, I know that there are cactus that are way bigger than this one, um, but I have to say my babe was super proud when he brought this guy home. It was a big deal. So we kind of have like a little cactus colony over here now. We've got this guy, that guy, that technically is a succulent, but still in a cacti family. This is another one of Warren's cactus um, that he got um, in the place before this place, and I was really impressed when he brought this one home. I was like, whoa, we've got tall cactus. So one day we'll have like one of those huge ones that are taller than me, but until then, these are our cacti. Um, also I got these little guys. These are from Ikea, by the way, you guys, and they sell them in a three pack for like, 15 bucks, so I definitely was super excited about that and wanted to have one of my own. And as you see, we have a corn plant here in the corner. Now, one of the best things about corn plants is that it's another plant that just, generally speaking, does really well. So we don't have just this one, we have another one upstairs in our bedroom. And what I love about corn plants is that they're, for the most part, really easy going. As long as you don't overwater them and affect their root system, 
They just, they do fantastic. And what's really cool is when springtime runs around, rolls around, they go crazy if you give it good uh, plant food. So it's really cool. Here I have my Palea plant. And I got this one at Trader Joe's. Um, I'm not sure if Trader Joe's still has them, but my friend Janae was all excited and she like called me like, oh my gosh, Trader Joe's has plenty of plants. So I was really excited um, about this one just because it was one of those plants that I had like seen online and I was really excited about it. And then I would go to the store and I could never find it. So I finally added one to my collection and I'm just super excited to have it. Here's another concrete planter that I made. Um, it's also got an air plant and two succulents on it. There is a cactus on here, but he didn't make it, so. It's okay, Charles. Yeah, let's, let's keep it moving. Oh, and how could I forget? So here we have a fiddly fig. This guy was gifted to us uh, by our friend Jake, who works for like a plant company. And he actually has gifted us quite a few of the plants that we have here in this apartment. We got a little terrarium. And one of the main things that we hear is why do we have so many plants? And you know, it's funny because I think that I may have asked the same thing prior to moving to New York. But what I came to realize is that when winter hits and everything goes gray and it's just like drab and dreary, like I hate that. So I noticed that over time I wanted to kind of recreate the outdoor spaces that I was used to in Houston where most of the year you can be outside and you can enjoy yourself. And that's what we've done with our home. We've really been able to create like our own version of an urban jungle and place plants in as many places as we can so that when winter hits, it's not as crowded. Y'all ready to go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So now we're going to take you guys upstairs. So we had the exact same mindset when we were designing the space upstairs. The guest bedroom always puts a twinkle in my eye because it's basically an almost replica of my first New York apartment in Flatbush, like down to like the design, the rug, everything, like the little lanterns. It's just something that like, I think the fans, it's just something that always kind of takes me back to that really special time of my life. So here you'll see that we have potted plants and plants that are propagating. So something that a lot of people don't know is that if you have a plant that got water, if you have a plant where maybe part of it is dying or you just don't think it's gonna make it, I always recommend just taking um, a clean pair of shears or a really sharp knife and cutting um, pieces of the plant off that you can. So you'll see that there's not one but two of them here in this space that are propagating. And it just is a really cool way to be able to keep the plant that you're saying goodbye to, but also have any growth from it as well. So here we have a Chinese evergreen. I love this plant. And if you guys don't <laughs> know this already, I like plants that are really easy to take care of. This plant, if you forget to water it a couple of times, you'll look up, it'll have a yellow leaf at some point, but it'll stay looking really, really good, which I think is like the coolest thing. And then over here, I have bamboo and water ivies and water and one of my favorites my curly spider plant so i'm really excited about this plant um recently because i've had it for a really really long time like i got it when i still lived in new york i got it at the union square farmer's market and spider plants are supposed to sprout these like little baby pups right a year went by nothing another year went by nothing but this year you guys it actually gave me not one, not two, but three, and I got blossoms on it. So it was just the coolest thing that it actually flowered. Um, I didn't even know that spider plants did that. It was just really cool. So this space gets nice and warm, and I think something about it in combination with the light just made it have a really cool um, transition, and I'm super pumped about that. So now I'm gonna talk into our room. We have a few plants in here uh, that you guys have already seen. We have another corn plant. This is a tall one. And guys, we went through, what, like two plants, babe, here in this corner trying to figure it out. And finally, we found one that works. So one of the main things, one of the, <laughs> one 
one of the main things um, that has been such a challenge for us with setting up the plants in our home is figuring out where they won't die. So there's a space that I wish I'd pointed out to y'all downstairs by the stairs where we just lost plant after plant after plant. We got this like huge majesty palm because we were like, okay, this thing is so big and so strong. There's no way that it can get taken out and it still didn't make it. Yeah, we, it's <laughs> so sad about that, bro, my. But anyway, this guy has made it in the corner. So if you don't have a lot of space in your apartment or if you have um, issues with light and you need something that you think will be able to stand that low light test, I definitely would recommend a core plant. I don't think that they, um, from my experience, like to be no light necessarily. I think there should be some sunlight that can get to it, even if it's from a distance. Um, but yeah, that one has been a trooper, even though I'm sure it's not getting as much light as it would like to. And then this is our fiddly fig. When we, not that we don't have another one, sorry, the little guy. But when we got this one, it was about this tall and it was just this cute little thing in the corner. And not only has it survived a cold winter here in the apartment with us, it's actually grown another three and a half feet or two feet. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You'd be Sometimes, getting the numbers I don't know, man. You just get the numbers and you keep going. All right, look, it's more like two. It's grown two feet and um, I think I'm at like three, three and a, you know what I'm saying? Like not actually three feet, it's like three chunks. Okay, okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's gotten another two feet on it and I am just praying that like it goes smooth in the winter. Um, here, obviously we have like our bed and more plants that are propagating and water and that's about it. Anything that you think I should point out? Like furniture or anything? Um, no, but there's a snake plant in the bathroom. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we missed one. Like and by we, one I mean over I. there too. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're not done, we're not done. So then, chose. sorry. So then guys, this is our bathroom, welcome. Uh, we also have this snake plant, and I'm glad that Warren thought to put this out because this snake plant is really special because it's in a room that doesn't have any windows in it. And yeah, that's the light that it gets the majority of the time. Yeah, give me, give me the light. So, this guy is still growing, it's still got new growth, and it's just doing really well. So I just, I can't believe it. So yeah, even if you have a house full of snake plants, it definitely is a way to get greenery in your house in spaces where you don't have the perfect and most ideal light conditions. Also notice that we have both upstairs and downstairs, the fiddle leaf figs are in very close proximity to the windows. So unlike the corn plant where we've seen more flexibility with where we keep them, that's not the case with them. Pothos, our pothos actually do pretty well. I have some that I keep in the bathroom here and they've done fantastic. Now to disclaimer, this one just got potted today um, and before I had it in water propagating, so it'll be interesting to see how it does when it's not in water anymore because I always think that plants that are in water tend to do better than plants in pots because you know they're in soil and you kind of have to see um, just how they take to the soil. It's always like a guessing game. Here I have another cutting from a corn plant. I love this one. This one actually is really similar, just a reference point to what's going on with the snake plant. So this one is in a hallway that the only light it's getting is kind of from like if the bedroom doors are open and from the light coming down from the rooftop and it still is beautiful and in great condition and has done really well so just trying to plant seeds on ways that you can have greenery in your house without having to have perfect lighting conditions next up we have the snake plant that i was telling you guys about earlier this one has just been so cool. Warren got this. Hey, when did you get this? How long ago did you get it? Mm, about two years ago. Yeah, that's right. So Warren got two, it. Three, maybe. Yeah, two. three, because I, I had it three. in the house even in, in New York. But anyway, um, this one is really cool because really early on, I noticed that it was something that could stand the test of time, like neglect, 
underwatering, overwatering. I've just been so impressed by it. Also, I've been able to cut some pieces off of it and propagate it for new ones. So for instance, the one that I showed you guys downstairs that actually came from the motherboard. So it's a big one and it's a really cool one. Now we're gonna go upstairs. So by far, I'd say one of my favorite parts about this house is that it has a private rooftop deck. It's so funny, when Warren and I came to see it, the lady brought us up here and we were like, oh, is this like a shared rooftop or is it for everyone? And she was like, no, it's y'all's. And I was like, what? And Warren and I looked at each other. We were like, where do we start? This is it. So coming from New York where it's like, everything is like so small, this definitely has been like such an upgrade and a treat to be in here in Philly instead. So anyway, this is our space. Warren put up these lights, which are just so cute. I love them. He was a big man this summer and got a, what's it called? A grill. Yeah, he, I was gonna call it a barbecue pit, but I was like, I don't know if that's a true. A grill. <laughs> he got a grill, you guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, so this is like the last space where it's like, I'd be curious to see if we're ever gonna do anything with it. I feel like we got our table and chair, we got the grill, put up the lights, and then that was it. So we'll see, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Anyway, that's our house. Thank you for hanging out with us, and we'll see you later. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by, you guys. If you guys have questions about specific plants that I didn't point out, I didn't notice in all honesty, it might be that I didn't know how to pronounce it or I needed to double check it. Um, but I'd be happy to look it up and let you know, so don't hesitate to reach out. Take care. <laughs> you guys, in light of the fact that the video ends a little choppy, I just wanted to have a proper clip of Warren in his fullness. Big old smile. Great disposition. What? Dism. Like these? I don't think you can do it on the front cam, but let me just zoom in. How about that? Yeah. Hey. yeah. They, they call him Sunshine. Anything you want to say about the plants, baby? Plants? Nah. People need to see me. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Tell me when to cut the cam. All right. That's it. Anyway. He loves our plants and uh, the zeal. It was just, you know, he was working so hard at being a great cameraman that he uh, he got caught up. But that's one of the things I love about you, babe. You're really good at focusing, you know? It's a gift. Anyway. So anyway, all right, that's it for real. Bye. <laughs>